Welcome to Modern Farm Business Podcast. This podcast is designed to help the farm leader bring their business to the next level. We'll cover everything from leadership and finance to strategy and planning. I'm your host, Dean Hefta. When we're part of a group, whether it's leading our farm, a work group at church, or volunteering at a thrift store, there's a lot of roles that we end up taking on depending on the situation. We may be the person that's setting the priorities and the pace of the group, or maybe we're just a contributor of talent to the team. Regardless, research is showing that one of the most valuable skills we can possess is that of a coach. Coaching is a special skill that we can develop, and the great thing is the fundamentals are learnable, something that we can grow at and learn our entire life. First off, what is coaching and why is it valuable? For me, coaching is essentially the skills and approaches that we use to help grow others. In the business world today, one of the fastest growing areas for skill development is in the area of coaching skills. Businesses are seeing firsthand the power and the impact of their staff implementing the practices of coaching rather than the traditional command and control or being that person that has all the answers. So, you know, let's think of an example that maybe goes through our mind when we hear of the word coach. And for me, that's a basketball coach. Now, there's some pieces of this model that are useful to us when we think about coaching in our life, and there's some that maybe aren't as useful. And that really depends on who we think of when we picture a basketball coach. On one end, you might have the coach that's continually on the end of exploding. They're trying to instruct every move that every player is trying to make during the whole game. They're reprimanding the players for mistakes. They're yelling at the refs, and they're creating anxiety for everybody around them. That's certainly not the model that we want to use as we think about coaching our staff or people that we're working with. The goal of coaching is to help people develop their skills and abilities, to increase their confidence in themselves, to improve their effectiveness when we're not there. I believe the best example of this is the late John Wooden, who coached UCLA to 10 NCAA championships in 12 years. His focus was on the development of his players as people, ensuring that they mastered the basics and that his team was ready enough so that when the game came, he really didn't have to do a bunch. He was famous not only for his quotes and his philosophy, but for spending the first practice of every season teaching the players how to put their socks and shoes on correctly. Talk about focusing on the fundamentals. And during the game, he really didn't pay much attention to the score because the score wouldn't change what he had already prepared his players to do. He had an unbelievable respect for his players and for the people around him. So I think he's a great model when it comes to how a basketball coach or a sports coach skills and abilities can translate into lessons for us in life. What the basketball coach recognizes is one fundamental truth. They can't be on the court playing the game. It's against the rules. Their success has to happen through their players, which means they have to develop them to achieve the goal on their behalf. Coach Wooden saw that firsthand, and his approach was effective in how he developed the people and got the team to work together. And ultimately in life... I believe being a coach is less about the tactics and skills that we might want to learn or try to learn about coaching, and it's more about our intention that we have with the people around us. If I believe the people on my team are inherently incompetent, lazy, ignorant, the position that I take with them is going to communicate way more than any of the tactics or tools that I use. They're going to know. The flip side of that is if I believe that people can grow, that they really want to do good, that they want to get better, that they want to learn, the position that I take in our relationship is also going to reflect that, regardless if I have any of the key tools for how to effectively coach. So for me, the first piece of this is understanding what my position is towards other people or the person that I'm wanting to coach? What's my position? Now, a caveat on this. If I have somebody on my team that simply can't do the job, I can coach until I'm blue in the face and they still aren't going to be successful. 
What I want you to realize is having a coaching approach doesn't mean that everybody can get to the performance that I expect. And in my leadership position on the farm, I have the responsibility to put people in the right roles so they can be successful. And with that, helping to coach them to performance. So are they in the right role? And that's so key as a leader. We have to have people in the right roles. They have to be trained and then we support them through coaching. So if step one is to check my position towards people, step two is replacing answers with questions. This is a very important area where we have to have self-awareness and the ability to see how we're being in the relationship as we move into that role of coach. So let's say your employee comes to you and asks, how do you want this implement fixed? At this moment, you have a couple of choices, and really neither of them are wrong. The question really is what your long-term intention is. Do you want to be the person making all the decisions on the farm, no matter how small? If yes, just give direction of what you want done and how you want it done and problem solved. In that, though, what you give up is your right to complain that your employee never thinks for themselves. Now, if they're a part-time employee, they're not going to be there more than a few days, and you want to make sure the job is done right, you should be very instructive. Here is how you want it done, because it's really a short-term solution. But if they are long-term employees and you really want to see them grow and contribute and increase their ability to think and act for themselves, you need a different response. When they ask, how do you want this fixed? The coach has to catch themselves and resist the impulse to give answers and direction. Instead, you begin engaging them through questions. What are our choices? Do you believe one approach is better than another? How can we make it better than when we got it? What do you think is the right approach? These questions force the employee to begin thinking and problem solving. Through the conversation, you're showing that you respect them and their abilities and their ability to think. They're growing in their confidence to act and solve problems. And eventually the interaction becomes them just letting you know that they're going to fix the implement. And your response is, okay, let me know if you need anything. Through this process, not only do capabilities grow, but so does the trust that people have in themselves and in you. So in addition to holding back our impulse to give answers and solving people's problems, which can create dependency, we can use other types of questions that can open up the dialogue in our relationship with the people around us. Questions like, what's on your mind? You know, it gets people talking and you never know what they're seeing or they're thinking uh, or what is going on in their world. A question like, you know, is there anything else that we should consider? Sometimes when we're working through a problem, we end up stopping too soon. Asking a question like, is there anything else we should consider, can get more perspectives into the situation. A question like, how can I be helpful? So maybe somebody's working on something, and rather than jumping in and beginning to tell them what they should be doing or what they're doing wrong, coming to them and saying, how can I be helpful, gives them the power it gives them the control to decide how much help they do or don't want. And it's a very respectful question to them. The third piece of this that I look at in the coaching relationship is to focus on principles and outcomes. It's really easy for us to give instruction on how to deal with a specific situation. And often we think to ourselves, okay, I'll show them how to do it this time and they'll know how to do it when it comes up again. The problem is that sometimes each situation ends up a little bit different, and that person or our focus might be so much on just getting through this problem, uh, we don't really turn that into a, a lesson that we can use in other places. So you know, I remember growing up on the farm, and when I was first out in the tractor doing tillage, what was most valuable and important to me wasn't the specific instruction from my dad or brothers on what to do on that specific field. More important was when they would explain the why around a decision, why we're doing a certain thing, the instruction around how the end product should look. And so that allowed me to make better decisions around depth and angle and speed and all the things that are going on out in the field. And so that 
helped me to become more self-reliant and more valuable to the team because I wasn't relying on them at each field to give me specific instruction. So when we aren't focusing people on the outcome we want or the reasons behind our decisions, we might be left to repeatedly give the same instruction on how to do something every time it comes up. So when you want to move your conversation into more of a coaching relationship, keep in mind these three areas. First, be aware of your position towards the other person. Do you believe they're in the right role? Do you see them being able to learn and grow? If not, your coaching efforts are going to be frustrated either by how you view them as a person or by the reality that they just aren't in the right role. Next, have the self-discipline to hold back answers for a bit when people come to you with problems. In that moment, if your desire is to see them grow and increase in their ability to solve the problem themselves in the future, you need to get them exercising problem solving. You can guide them through the process you would use, ask them questions to get them thinking, uh, share even some experiences. Just remember, the easy fix in the moment is to give the answer. But if you want to get more done through people in the long term, you have to grow their capabilities. And finally, focus on outcomes and principles. When you're in a group or in a one-on-one conversation, have your own situational awareness to know if the conversation is getting too focused on the details of the situation. Pull the conversation back to why we're doing this, what success looks like, And what are those fundamentals that we need to understand that are at work right now? In coaching, our goal is to have great dialogue. And we'll learn new things ourselves from the people we're coaching. Through the process, our hope is in the growth of the capabilities, the confidence, and independence of the people we're coaching. I hope you've been able to pull some ideas out of this session that you can put to use in your life. If you have any coaching stories or questions, be sure to send them over to me at dean at modernfarmbusiness.com. Thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks. Thanks.